Hello, my name is Matt Simon with Future Plus Systems, and welcome back to our lab. This video is the first in our DDR5 educational series, in which we'll be taking a look at the signals found within the JETIC DDR5 SD RAM specification. For over half a century, JETIC has been the global leader in developing open standards and publications for the microelectronics industry. The DDR5 SD RAM specification was first published by JETIC in July of 2020 with an updated version of the specification having been published in October of 2021. Before discussing the defined signals within the JETIC DDR5 SD-RAM specification, it is worth reviewing the very important differences between DDR4 and DDR5. The key differences between DDR4 and DDR5 are speed, I.O. voltage, power management, channel architecture, burst length, and maximum die density. Speeds for DDR4 include 1600 to 3200 megatransfers per second and a 0.8 to 1.6 GHz clock rate. Compare that to the 4800 to 8400 megatransfers per second and the 1.6 to 4.8 GHz clock rate for DDR5. The I.O. voltage for DDR4 is 1.2 volts, where the I.O. voltage for DDR5 is 1.1 volts. Power management for DDR5 is now on DIMM where power management for DDR4 was found on the motherboard. The channel architecture for DDR4 is a 72-bit data channel, a 64 data, and 8 error correction, with one channel per DIMM. DDR5's channel architecture is a 40-bit data channel of 32 data and 8 error correction, with two channels per DIMM. The burst length for DDR4 is 4 and 8, where the burst length for DDR5 is 8 and 16. The maximum die density for DDR4 is 16 GB SDP to 256 GB DIMM. Maximum die density for DDR5 is 64 GB SDP to 256 GB DIMMs. As you join me in our investigation of each signal, you'll notice that we have provided the signal's name, symbol, type, function, an example, and any notes that might be useful. We invite you to pause the video as needed to review the examples and notes at your own pace. Now, let's get started. The first signal we'll be discussing is a very important clock signal. It is an input signal, and its symbol is CK underscore T and CK underscore C here in CKT and CKC. CKT and CKC are differential clock inputs in which all address and control input signals are sampled on the crossing of the positive edge of CKT and the negative edge of CKC. The next signal, chip select, is an input signal and its symbol is CSN. All commands are masked when CSN is registered high and CSN provides for external rank selection on systems with multiple ranks. CSN is considered part of the command code and can be used to enter and exit the parts from power down modes. The input data mass signal is an input signal. Its symbols are DMN, DMUN, and DMLN. DMN is an input mass signal for write data. Input data is masked when DMN is sampled low coincident with that input data during a write access. DMN is sampled on both edges of DQS. For a BI-8 device, the function of DMN is enabled by mode register 5, DM enable. Note that DM is not supported for BI-4 devices. Command and address inputs, by its name, are an input signal, and its symbol is CA. CA signals provide the command and address inputs according to the command truth table found within the JETIC specification. Note that, since some commands are multi-cycle, the pins may not be interchanged between devices on the same bus. For RDIM, the RCD samples on both edges of the clock. Active low asynchronous reset is an input signal, and its symbol is reset n. Reset is active when reset n is low and inactive when reset n is high. Reset n must be high during normal operation. Reset n is a CMOS rail to rail signal with DC high and low at 80% and 20% of VDDQ. Data input and output is an input and output signal. Its symbol is DQ. This is a bi directional data bus. 
If CRC is enabled via mode register, then CRC code is added at the end of a data burst. The next signal we'll discuss is the data strobe signal. Data strobe is an input and output signal. Its symbols are DQST, DQSC, DQSUT, DQSUC, DQSLT, and DQSLC. This signal is driven by the host for writes and sourced by DRAM for reads. It is edge aligned with read data and centered in write data. For BI16, DQSL corresponds to the data on DQL0 to DQL7. DQSU corresponds to the data on DQU0 to DQU7. The data strobe DQST, DQSLT, and DQSUT are paired with differential signals DQSC, DQSLC, and DQSUC respectively to provide differential pair signaling to the system during reads and writes. DDR5 SDRAM supports differential data strobe only and does not support single-ended. Termination data strobe is an output signal. Its symbols are TDQST and TDQSC. TDQST and TDQSC is applicable for BI AD RAMs only. When enabled via mode register 5, TDQS enable, the DRAM shall enable the same termination resistance function on TDQST and TDQSC that is applied to DQST and DQSC. When disabled via mode register 5, TDQS enable, DMN and TDQST shall provide the data mask function depending on mode register 5, DQ enable. TDQSC is not used. BI4 and BI16 DRAMs must disable the TDQS function via mode register 5, TDQS enable. Alert is an input and output signal. Its symbol is alert N. If there is an error in CRC, then alert N is pulsed low. During connectivity test mode, this pin works as an input. Use of the signal is system dependent, and when not in use, alert N must be banded to VDDQ. Connectivity test mode enable is an input signal, and its symbol is TEN. TEN is required on BI4, BI8, and BI16 devices. A high on this pin shall enable connectivity test mode. It is a CMOS rail-to-rail -rail signal with AC high and low at 80% and 20% of VDDQ. Use of this signal is system dependent. This pin may be pulled low through a weak pull-down resistor to VSS. Mirror is an input signal, and its symbol is MIR. This signal is used to inform an SDRAM device that it is being configured for mirrored mode versus standard mode. With the MIR pin connected or strapped to VDDQ, the SDRAM internally swaps even-numbered CAs with the next higher odd number CA. Normally, the MIR pin must be tied to VSS if no CA mirror is required. Mirror pair examples include CA2 with CA3, not CA1, and CA4 with CA5, not CA3. Note that the CA13 function is only relevant for certain densities, including stacking, of DRAM components. In the case that CA13 is not used, its ball location, considering whether MIR is used or not, should be connected, strapped, to VDDQ. Command and address inversion is an input signal. Its symbol is CAI. With the CAI pin connected or strapped to VDDQ, the DRAM internally inverts the logic level present on all of the CA signals. Normally, the CAI pin must be connected to VSS if no CA inversion is required. ODT for command and address is an input signal. Its symbol is CA ODT. If this signal pin is connected, strapped, to VSS, application of group A settings is warranted. If the signal pin is connected, strapped, to VDDQ, application of group B settings is warranted. The next signal we'll discuss is loopback data output. Loopback data output is an output signal and its symbol is LBDQ. The loopback output pin is controlled by mode register 53, loopback output select. Bit 0 through 4 dictate which signal will be outputted on this pin. When loopback is enabled, it is in driver mode using the default RON described in the loopback function section. When loopback is disabled, the pin is either terminated or high Z based on mode register 36 RTT loopback. 
Loopback data strobe is an output signal and its symbol is LBDQS. This is a single-ended strobe with the rising edge aligned with loopback data edge and the falling edge aligned with the center of the loopback data eye. When loopback is enabled, it is in driver mode using the default RON described in the loopback function section. When loopback is disabled, the pin is either terminated or high Z based on mode register 36, RTT loopback. In the JETIC specification, you may see reserved for future use. This can be utilized in the future as either an input or output signal, and its symbol is RFU. No connect has a symbol, NC, in which no internal electrical connection is present. The DQ power supply is a supply. Its symbol is VDDQ. This is an IO DC power supply of 1.1 volts. The power supply is a supply and its symbol is VDD. This is a core power supply of 1.1 volts. Ground is considered a supply type. Its symbol is VSS and its function is ground. The DRAM activating power supply is a supply. Its symbol is VPP and it is a DRAM activating power supply of 1.8 volts. Finally, the reference pin for ZQ calibration is a reference signal. Its symbol is ZQ. This pin is tied to an external 240 ohm resistor, RZQ, which is then tied to VSS. This has been Future Plus Systems' first video in our DDR5 educational series. Future Plus Systems has been a leader in enabling the computer design industry since 1991. Our products are used by hundreds of companies using standard industry computer buses and PCs, servers, mobile products, and embedded computer systems. To learn more about Future Plus Systems DDR5 products and services, including the world's first commercially available DDR5 RDIM LRDIM active interposer, visit us at futureplus.com or contact us at protocol.decode at futureplus.com.